go to Dash. Let's head down to the stage where Riv has the winning support standing by for a chat. I am joined by Energy's Kiwi Kid, and that's the word I'm going to stick on after their victory, Energy, because that, a lot of endurance was necessary to get through the best of three series. Kiwi, I got to ask you, what were the comms like? What was just the mentality like going through this series against P1? Um, we play every best of three, like three best of ones. I don't know if somebody said that before. I hope I'm not recycling anything, but that's what I'm thinking. And yeah, we just, you know, we just keep calm every time. Honestly, I, I feel like over the past few years, maybe <laughs> my patience has worn down like maybe a little. It's like maybe at 90% of a hundred, but you know, we just figure ourselves back up and we just keep doing it. It seems like you guys are able to break through any of these walls you have in front of you with these victories. You find the wins. If you will, what are some of those blockers that Energy has been facing, whether it be comms or kind of just getting synergy together, if you can share those with the viewers and fans? Um, I would say our, our main, you know, block is probably synergy. So I guess maybe, yeah, I mean, you need good comms for good synergy. So I guess, yeah, synergy probably, uh, like, envelops everything. Uh, we just need to all be on the same page, and that's what we're working on. You know, just one at a time. All right. Well, it seems to be coming together slowly, but surely second win in that column. Going on for uh, your next game, looking at Cloud9. How are you guys going to prep for this one? Um, I'm going to do a lot of talking to Bunny and Smoothie. <laughs> See what they think is strong. <laughs> no, nah, actually, we're just going to look over at games today a little, but mostly it's not going to be what we did right or wrong. It's just how we're going to talk to each other and how things can be more clearly just you know, maybe we should use smaller sentences and, and just how to be more concise. Just getting the idea across quick and making the advantage work. Kiwi Kid, thank you very much for the interview. Best of luck in the rest of your matches this summer's split. And we're going to throw it to the guys in the analyst zone to break down the rest of the day. Thank you very much, Riv. Kiwi and the rest of Energy, honestly, kind of scraping by in a victory here in this series against Phoenix One. Uh, you know, relatively close games across the board, very yep. back and forth. I know that, you know, we've had our fair share of criticisms for both squads at different times. And then on the flip side, they've also had their moments of brilliance and they're, uh, and, uh, they're making their cases for why they deserve to be in the NALCS. But ultimately, that was a, a – Riv said it right, energy, right? Like in terms of this was an endurance Mental test fortitude. for both yeah. of these teams. Because cause especially after that second game, you just got to totally be out of it. Like, how do we lose this game? Um, based off, you know, Kiwi's interview there, it sounds like there's still some communication issues where they're like, oh, maybe we need to use shorter sentences or something, which would make a lot of sense for the issues that you saw where they can't siege correctly. And, right. Like, if you can't communicate where you want your tanks to stand or when to walk up and hit the turret as a team, like, if you have those kind of problems, you're going to really struggle to close games out. And I think we kind of saw that. Yeah. So, uh, it was good that they got this third win. You know, it goes down as a match win. Yes, that, that's, yeah, that's that matters. what matters. You get the victory in the series. And then you just got to look to improve, which is what Kiwi was kind of saying. Exactly so. that. All right, well, let's kind of work through this third game just real briefly. Uh, you know, I think the big thing that jumps out at me is in this game, Energy is the team that actually gets out to a slow start. They're the ones who uh, kind of bungle that lane swap, leaving the turret up with very little health. And so kind of handing P1 some early advantages, which they're able to use to pick up a couple early Infernal Dragons. Yeah. They get the first dragon off, you know, basically that wave mm -hmm. not bouncing the way it should really. And then they go, and the next time they build up the wave to go bottom, unfortunately, they don't quite play it right. And P1 hands over two kills, and the game kind of starts, stall, you can stall out. Like, right. one team is, like, ahead, and they're trying to push it, and then they make a mistake. And they kind of, like, they, they kind of, like, scare themselves into yeah. playing aggressively. And, you know, they still got the second one. And the game's kind of moving along slowly with some skirmishes. Some people like going for buff in invades, and that's about it. Uh, and then you finally get kind of this big fight for the third dragon. Or fourth it, dragon. It was the fourth dragon of the game, but the third and third Inferno dragon. Right. And, and before we jump into that replay, I just want to continue to... Uh, I want to continue to hammer this point, though, of... Phoenix One being gifted a couple of advantages in those first two Infernal Dragons because, yes, although the gold was essentially even moving into that large team fight for the third Infernal, if all things are equal but you've got 16% boosts on all of your AD and AP, then that's actually a fair advantage that you have at this stage in the game. The, the, the gold value of those stats is pretty significant. And if you secure that third one, even greater at 24%. But they don't set up for it. I mean, the game tells you six minutes in advance which dragon is coming up next. You would think that 
of of either of the teams, Phoenix one would be the one that's you know more if it, you know more uh, motivated to be there when it spawns. But Mash doing his red buff five seconds before it spawns is just inexcusable. Yeah, I really don't have you know some kind of proposition for why he would be there. The, the right. Infernal Dragon is so much more important. They're technically ahead in that game. They could probably have gotten control of that area if they wanted to, but then, you know, Zig's down there sitting in a bush, like, waiting, like, is my team coming, or am I just going to sit here? And they get into this, like, weird state, and... Uh, yeah. It's just... So with, with that in mind, let's go ahead and pull the replay up now, and we'll kind of watch it out. But this is uh, Energy being able to set up around it a little bit. They did get there first, and even after the Dragon is secured, that's when Phoenix One decides to come in and attempt and engage. Right, and you can just see like how uncoordinated they are with like picking targets. So they, they start from behind where uh, Zig is flanking. They root one person, and then Hecarim comes over, and then Mash get, isn't even there. Mash isn't there. They get the flash root onto Quas, and then Pyrian steps up to keep damaging him. But Zig gets scared from the Jinol and right. starts backing up. Whereas if they both just t targeted Quas, they could have killed him. Mm -hmm. But uh, Zig totally stops his own damage. I don't know, maybe his cooldowns were completely off, but I'm not sure. He was sitting in a bush. He should have been stacking them, ready to drop combos. So right. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but it was just a really bad team fight. There are a number of times where Zig was away from the rest of his team and would have to flash out or just mm -hmm. died for it. And at that point in the game, not only was it Infernal Dragon, it was four kills and then Baron, and which kind of secured... That secures energy a lead, but similar to game two, they weren't able to take much off of that first Baron that they picked up. It was the second one that they secured, which they were able to use to kind of finally push into the base and break that inhibitor wall. Uh, and at that point, they kind of had a handle on the game. So good on energy for being able to close half out as many barons and yeah. they won. It took them half as many barons as game two. I mean, so good on energy for picking up the victory. And as you mentioned, what matters is that they got the series win. They, you know, they, they improved their record just slightly and they beat a team that they are expected to have beaten. We got to move to player of the game. That's going to go to OQ six zero and six on that gin death list. Uh, ultimately, and sec even securing a baron one with his own auto attack. Right. And then two, just uh, his, uh, his ability to pop people essentially with uh, with his high damage output. Yeah, he really key. he really softened people up before the fights. Um, I mean, he was also cleaning up a lot, obviously, by the number of kills he had. But it was a lot of his W's before were chunking people out, setting up roots. You saw he would often you know catch a Nori, and a Nori would have to ghost away or alt away or something. You know, and, and taking that engage away from him as an immobile carry, making them use it defensively is, is a huge benefit for him and, and his team. All in all, they'll be happy to pick up that victory over on Energy. Now, we definitely had some big plays today, so let's take a look at a few of your tweets. First up is from Game 1 between Echo Fox and TSM. From Final final Boss, if that's not a sign of Froggen's experience in late game, I don't know what is. Let's check it out. One okay. okay. it's still full HP. It's full HP. Well, follow me, follow me, sweep. End, end, the game, end, the end the game, end the game. End the game, end the game, end the game. Again here. Spread, spread out, spread out, spread out. I shield, I shield for all of us. Okay, end the game. End game, oh, end game. Oh. Dexos, 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 Dexos. Uh, end, 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 end. Nice. Good shit, good shit. And we have to remember that this was the second attempt. At, right. a, at a Nexus rush, the first one being unsuccessful. And as you mentioned in uh, the post-game segment of that one, the fact that they had a Jin on their team the first time around is what made it very difficult for them to attempt that Nexus kill. Yeah, uh, Keith flashed in, reloading, and then just kind of <laughs> stood there for a second before getting killed by Azir. This time, right. able to get in there, do damage. His whole team was with him. And with the Elder Dragon, you know, yeah. boosting them in, in the burn, it was pretty And easy. all five members hitting the Nexus. Right. Focusing the Nexus, that's all they need to do. They come up with the victory. Next up is a tweet from Lol S. P91, that Pobelter Azir play top lane in game one versus Liquid was hands down 100% the best play of the week. Well, that's an endorsement. Here's that Sharima surprise. I can go, I can go. We can go, we can go, we can, go. We can win this, we can win this. Nice. This is, this is real. I got him, I got him. Nice. 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 Here's Pobelter, huge ulti back in, scoops them all in, and the model just gonna run rampant in this team by up and Belter goes off. Got the sweet style zooms and many people on the internet throwing around the 200 IQ ult there from Poe Belter. I mean, it was absolutely stellar. Five man ult with the flash there, which really saved, or well, I wouldn't even say saved necessarily because they, they, were they, they were in that game, but yeah. catapulted them. Let's go with catapulted them. Yeah, that was them. just like a slingshot <laughs> to the finish line. Like, great. This right. is probably over now. They were running a marathon, but then they like hitched a ride. With yeah, they got they the drop yeah. on the train, like pop out. <laughs> like, oh, great. This is where I want to be. Right, first place. I'll take it. Anyway, and finally from Cloud9 versus Team Envy, I bet you can guess 
Flash 33C's tweet, sneaky's sneaky rather with the pen to finish. Here's your LCS big play. Do they have the damage? Vitos repels into the air. Impact left alone. A kill coming through for Sneaky. Make that two. He's keeping his team alive. A quad for Sneaky. The Pentagon to save the game. Huge lead for Cloud9. Damage, damage, damage. No, no, no. Penta. Got it. I don't know. Nice. I feel like I'm playing. League of Legends is an MMO right there. It was like I feel I felt like I was an archer right there. Yeah. <laughs> when when's third person mode coming to the game? Because I want to play like that. That looks know, sick. Right? Yeah, that would be kind of fun. Also really terrifying though when like a hecarim is ulting at you. Like, yeah. Covering your entire screen. Or just if you were anyone during that Pobelter play. Yes, exactly. So I guess there are pros and cons to yeah. that to that method of play well we've got six matches on the books so far so let's see how the teams are stacked up at the end of the day tsm remains the king of the hill and still undefeated immortals is right behind them in second fall by cloud nine and envy liquid and apex round out our top six teams and with their win today energy have tied clg to move ahead of echo fox and phoenix one now week four of the nalcs isn't quite over yet we've got one more day of action packed games for your viewing pleasure Tomorrow, the Battle Arena kicks off the day with Cloud9 versus Energy, followed by Phoenix1 and CounterLogic Gaming. But our match of the week will be on NALCS2, with Team Envy getting a shot at dethroning first place Titans TSM. I mean, that matchup itself, we could probably talk about this matchup for hours, but let's not talk about it. Let's let the players talk about this matchup and as they speak uh, about how they think this one will go. I don't think anyone anticipated Envy being so good. I think they're a strong team. They have a pretty good grasp on the meta and they play a really distinct style. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to our match because I think it'll be really interesting and close. Having respect is, isn't the same thing as being scared. I think everybody on the team respects TSM, but we're confident in our abilities too. I think when you're on a winning team as an AD carry, it's really easy to do well. Because they're doing well, Lod looks particularly better than like other ADs, but when I watch his play, he's definitely not very great. I think he's completely wrong. Sure, like they make me look better, but at times I make them look better too. That's the whole point of being on a team. I think I pretty much match him like mechanically, and I think I could be a better teammate than him too, so I think I have an edge on him. When I play against Min Soliki, when I play against Min Scrims, he's not very good. So I expect that to roll over to stage as well. Let's go, 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 let's go. Strong words coming out of both AD carries that's here so walking into this matchup. Yeah, what? I mean, that's exactly what you want to see going to the match of the week is not just high level play, but a little bit of emotional, mm -hmm. you know, got to stick up for myself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, how do you view this bot lane matchup? I mean, Lot is putting up quite a performance in his first real split in the LCS. Doublelift, of course, has been a performer individually across his entire career, but looks very good on this TSM roster. I think a big part of it for me is the draft. Both of them have been playing a lot of Lucian, mm -hmm. and you're going to see how high in priority can that pick get. Is it ever going to reach ban status? Is it going to be coming first pick? You know, on red side, you expect early rotations. Are people going to try and, like, leave it up for trades? Mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting thing to look at, and I think just in terms of skill in laning 2v2, I, I would have to give it to Doublelift. Okay. So maybe Envy is looking for a couple more 2v1s. I think that could favor them as a team that really works well as a unit, um, getting out of some laning phases that might be detrimental to them. So I want to take a look at one other matchup being the top lane, just kind of put a spotlight on that. Of course, Seraph being a huge leader for the team, a top lane shot caller, and a top performer for the split in general. But across across the rift, he's going to be facing Huni, And then, of course, behind Huni always is Rainover. I think that's really the most important point. Uh, you're talking about Immortals. Isn't yes. it TSM? Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah what am I, I thinking? Like, Sorry, Hauntzer. Long day, dude. My good. Okay. It has been a long day, but I, I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Sarah versus Hauntzer is still a very, very intense matchup. Less so because of the jungle pressure, but more so because Hauntzer individually has been putting up some great performances as well. on the And with a very large champion. Right, that's what I was about to say, is, you know, not many people are playing Swain top. And right. I think, you know, obviously, Seraph has a big champ pool. He can play a number of things, but going against Swain is a little bit different beast. Um, and I want to see how Seraph can adapt to that, as well as the fact that TSM really work well as a team. They have people all over the map, so, you know, it is Beard coming to help out Hauntzers whenever he gets an advantage in mid lane. He wants to spread it around the rest of the map, and that's something that TSM does very well. All right, well, this is a hype match to be sure. My brain is clearly depleted, so I need to take a break before we come back and check all the action out tomorrow. That's going to do it for us. So for myself, Mark, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow. Get some rest.